Welcome to St. Michael's Online Worship on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We also acknowledge that today, nationwide, we celebrate National Women's Day. And we would like to wish all our women on this day a happy Women's Day. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim God's name. Make known among the nations what God has done. Sing to God. Sing praise. Tell of God's wonderful acts. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord for strength. See God's face always. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this day seeking your healing and restoring love. Give us courage to reach out to you in the good and easy times, as well as in the times of strain and stress. Open our hearts to receive your message of peace and hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise God, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. We now pray the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to God's, God's people on earth. earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We now pray the Collect for Purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and the Lord's compassion is over all creation. Confident of this promise, 
We come before God and one another to confess our sins, repent and seek God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the collect together. God of awesome wonder, bless us with bold belief, even in the darkness of the night, and the assault of life's storms, that we may be messengers of your peace and justice, in the name of the one whom winds and waves obey, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now listen to the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 14. Listen to the good news proclaimed in Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately Jesus reached out his hand to him and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they had climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of Christ. 
Glory to Christ our Saviour. I greet you in the name of Jesus, the one who calms the storm. In a stormy sea, a figure comes walking across the water towards the disciples in their boat. Already in crisis, challenged by wind and waves and thrown about, they call out, it's a ghost. They hear their friend reply, courage, it is I, do not fear. When Jesus climbs into the boat, the wind and waves settle. No longer is this a ghost or a teacher or friend, they respond to the events with worship and with the revelation, truly, you are the Son of God. Can you imagine when Peter, even as an adult man, goes home and tells his mother about when he stepped out of the boat to walk on the water in a storm because Jesus said, come. As a parent, you might say, what were you thinking? I'm not sure which part of the story Peter would highlight. His spur of the moment challenge, his courageous leap over the edge, his few moments of absolute wonder as he joined Jesus in this miraculous experience, or maybe the fear and horror when he noticed the wind and began to sink. His crying out, Lord, save me, or the moment that Jesus caught his hand. I'm interested in Peter's decisive action to step out of the boat onto the water. I also want to link that rash decision with a different story from the Bible in our Old Testament reading today. Young Joseph with the fancy coat is annoying his brothers and making them jealous to the point that they want to kill him. Reuben, the eldest, speaks up, intervening. Don't kill him. Let's just throw him into this dry well and leave him there. Reuben plans to come back, rescue Joseph, and return him to their father. Reuben's intervention, his impulsive and decisive no to save Joseph's life, changed the course of history for the people of Israel. Peter, in his moment of courage and inspiration, seeing in Jesus the fullness of all that he could be, created a pivotal moment for the disciples, but also for Peter himself, as he began to make the impossible possible. Even if just for a moment, he embodied the man he would be, the rock on which God would build the church. I'm talking about leadership, the ability to take decisive action in a storm. It's those people who are unafraid that we rely on in times of crisis. Call them impetuous or foolish, and Peter definitely had that reputation. They do not let fear and doubt stop them when it counts most. In retrospect, we can judge people of good intention for what they did, but how much more do we judge good-hearted people for what they didn't do? For their silence. Nine brothers would have left Joseph dead in the desert if Reuben had not spoken up when he did. Peter may never have stepped up again if he had not had that first experience testing his faith and trust in who Jesus is. Here's the thing. For both Reuben and Peter, the outcome was not what they had imagined or desired. Reuben went back to the well only to discover that the brothers had sold Joseph into slavery. Peter barely took a step or two before his fear of the wind overcame him. But I'm interested in that moment, the courage and the impulse and the decision to act. Let's understand that frequently we can't take credit for any outcome. We're not that powerful that our actions control or guarantee any result we desire and God's outcome may look different. Thinking of Reuben and Peter, even our so-called failure to achieve our perfect outcome becomes an opportunity or an opening in which God's purposes and possibilities emerge. Faith says God will do something with the outcome and every day 
we place our actions, our decisions, our judgment calls as an offering of surrender, a sign of our faith in God's loving power. Sometimes we have time to meet and discuss and weigh the consequences, and sometimes we don't. When we pause too long to examine the wind and waves, we talk ourselves into doing nothing. As individuals and as a society, we reason ourselves into inaction and we become ineffective because the moment that would have made a difference goes past. I'm talking about Women's Day today and about August as the month of compassion and Women's Month. Firstly, to honour the courageous actions of the 20,000 women who marched in 1956, and particularly out of respect for the leadership shown by Lillian Ngoi, Helen Joseph, Albertina Sisulu, Rahima Musa, and Sophia Williams de Brain, and the heritage that lives on because of them. But I'm also calling us into action and saying don't let this moment pass. When we hear the crying and shouting next door, it's not okay to say, I don't want to get involved. If we heard it, we're involved. When we have that silent family agreement that we don't talk about someone's temper, when we drive past and look away, I'm referring in particular to gender-based violence, but also in this month of compassion, to all types of violence and abuse of power to which we are witnesses. Report abusers. Stop protecting them or making excuses for them. Support survivors. Organize. Don't, let vict don't leave victims left standing alone against not only their abuser, but a whole abusive system. What will it take before we step out of the boat in spite of the wind and waves. We can only change the culture by collective action and with faith, we can lead. It can start with speaking up when a sexist or racist joke is told in our presence, when someone is demeaned or objectified because that type of boys talk or racist talk has been normalized. Doing something is scary Doing nothing is worse. I pray that we will have courage to step out of the boat. I pray most of all that we won't be in danger and that no one will have to act alone. But please decide to act. I believe God will intervene with us. There is a life-giving outcome that we can set in motion through small but powerful acts of leadership and faith in the storm. Today is a very special day in the life of this parish, St. Michael's in Bryanston, but also in the life of the Datterson Children's Ministry portfolio, because we come to honor uh, Jeanette Andrea Lafleur for her contribution to this ministry and through the School for Ministries, we applied to the bishop that she be awarded the bishop's medal. And the bishop is not able to be here to do this, so we're going to do this on, on his behalf. Jeanette, greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. It is indeed a great pleasure for us as the Diocese of Johannesburg to honor you and decorate you with the Bishop's Medal for your passion, compassion, for your love of God, of Christ, and the people of God in the body of Christ, and particularly the young disciples. You started this special ministry which God has given you in the Caribbean. You went to Botswana. Now you are with us in the Diocese of Johannesburg. As a small token of our appreciation, please receive this medal 
on this special day of Women's Day in our country. We also want to express our gratitude to your family and the amazing and for the amazing support that they are giving you at this time. May the Lord bless you. I've asked uh, Ashdikan Moses to read the, the citation on behalf of myself, of the chapter, and of the Diocese of Johannesburg. A scripture that I would give, like to give you as an encouragement in your journey, it is Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for men or women. And verse 24, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, may the grace of our Lord continue to embrace you and your loved ones. God bless. So we're very proud, Jeanette, to be able to do this in honoring you for the ministry that you have given to this church and to the diocese at large. So I'm going to start off by reading the citation um, that explains this medal. Bishop's Medal awarded to Jeanette Andrea Lafleur. This award is in recognition of Jeanette for her dedication, commitment and support for the children's ministry portfolio in the Diocese of Johannesburg. Jeanette has used her teaching gifts to make an immense difference to the spiritual growth and discipleship of children, their facilitators and the teachers. Her involvement in the Anglican Church began with her ministry as a young woman, she's still young, alongside her sister Judy. Together they became key contributors to the life of the Anglican Church in Georgetown, Guyana in the Caribbean. Then later, when she moved to Botswana in the mid-90s, she taught Sunday school at the Holy Cross Cathedral in Khabarone. When she moved to Johannesburg in the early 2000s, Jeanette joined St. Michael's in Brighton, helping to build up the children's ministry here to what it is today. Since 2012, Jeanette has been part of the Johannesburg Diocese and Children's Ministry, where she has been involved in the training of teachers, the development of the children's ministry curriculum, and various other ministries. We acknowledge that Jeanette's work is extremely valuable, not only to this diocese, but also to the broader Anglican Church of Southern Africa, as other dioceses utilize her training and curriculum material. We thank God for her knowledge, her insight, and inspirational contribution over the years, providing an avenue for intentional discipleship of our young people and children. So this certificate would have been given by the bishop himself, as it is written, given under our hand and seal on this ninth day of August in the year of our Lord, 2020 and in the seventh year of the bishop's consecration. So I'm now going to ask um, Reverend Allison to um, pin the medal that is from the bishop. And to give you this certificate as an acknowledgement of what you have meant to this parish and to the diocese at large. And yes, good morning, everyone. Um, this is indeed a great honor. Um, my gratitude to Bishop Steve and the entire diocese of Johannesburg for this privilege, this honor, for this award which is quite a shock. I mean, the citation suggests that there's been a lot of collusion in getting details about 
my work in the Anglican Church since I was a young girl. Um, and I'd like to thank the Children's Ministry, the Diocesan Children's Ministry, for the opportunity to serve. I think it's not only an opportunity, it has been a privilege to serve God because in all I do, I am serving God through the children, through the teachers. And I have had lots of fun. I love to teach. I love education. I, and I have made so many friends. And I must thank Molly, who came to me, got me involved, sat me down and gave me lots of papers with documents that I went through and edited. Um, and it has been a great pleasure. Thank you to the entire Children's Ministry team past and present for your support, for your love, for your friendship, to the St. Michael's community, the Junior Church community, MST, Venerable Moses, and all of the priests who have served here, and our wonderful teachers and children who give me lots of joy and pleasure. And a big thank you to my family, whose support has been um, just very strong and solid. And my children whom I've left many Saturdays alone at home when Warren has been traveling and just keep in touch by phone while I'm teaching or doing the stuff that I so enjoy. Thank you for your patience and understanding and thank you again for this honor and I must say to God be the glory. Let us now affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have taught us to pray and give thanks for all people. We come before you in prayer as we face this pandemic which has turned our lives upside down. We don't see it, but we feel the effects of its loss. Receive our prayer for all the people of the world during this time of uncertainty, need, social distancing, loneliness and fear. Help us to see and to know the power of your Spirit so that we agree in the truth of your Holy Word and live in unity and godly love. We pray for your servants and all those who, are, who have authority and responsibility among the nations, our leaders and health workers. Guide them and fill them with a spirit to serve those in need and not themselves. We pray that they show reverence and help them to rule with responsibility and respect. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the women leaders of our country so that your word flows through them as they talk, teach, serve and lead. Lord, provide our leaders with reminders of why they decided to dedicate their lives to public service. Help our president to speak and act in honesty and integrity. Bring strong, wise and spiritually mature people to surround him. Give him wisdom to reject the voices of those who urge him to seek personal power and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we repent for our sins. May your light shine through those who failed to see you in others. In particular, we are in anguish due to the high incidence of violence directed at women and children. We beseech you to touch the insensitive men and rekindle their humanity to respect life. May the Holy Spirit intervene and mediate as the rate of femicide increases. We put all our faith and trust in thee to provide your wisdom to researchers for COVID vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Dear God, in a time when the world is filled with fear, uncertainty and anxiety, we ask that you remind us of your spirit and strength that lives and reigns within us. Give us the courage to be generous in thought, word and deed 
to have the courage of our convictions to speak out against all forms of oppression and abuse. O oh Lord, remind us of the peace, joy, and love that we all possess in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the only source of health, healing, and consolation. In you there is calm and the only true peace. Grant to the sick, dying and bereaved, an awareness of your presence and give them perfect confidence in you. In all the pain, suffering, anxiety and weariness, teach them to yield themselves to your never failing care and love, knowing that your power surrounds them. In your unending love and mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Be their refuge and strength to lift them from the darkness of despair to the peace and light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, at times we travel life's path with joy and confidence. At other times, we are weary and discouraged and wonder if we are on the right path. Please journey at our side in the week ahead and sustain us with the bread of life and enable us to serve you faithfully as we depend on your grace. Almighty God, bless our nation and grant that all of us may live in obedience to your word and follow after truth, righteousness and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer loving god lead us into the coming week son of god help us to believe you are close to us spirit of god enable us to be a sign of hope comfort and love to all in the name of christ our lord amen, amen. Let us now bless the offering and donations that have been made to the Church of St. Michael's. Faithful God, bless the gifts we bring to you today. Use them and us to plant seeds of faith, hope and love in the world, so that your goodness will grow among your people and your name be honoured for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for having created us and given us to each other in the human family. Thank you for being with us in all our joys and sorrows, for your comfort in our sadness, your companionship in our loneliness. Thank you for yesterday, today and tomorrow, and for the whole of our lives. Thank you for friends, for health and for grace. May we live this and every day conscious of all that has been given to us. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.